Hello friends, and thanks for stopping by my channel again and checking out my latest video. Today we're going to go over the Moonraker Shuttlecraft from AMT, a kit that was reissued recently by Round 2 Models. And I really like this kit. I've kind of had my eye out for this kit for a long time, but when Round 2 re-released it last year, I thought I'm going to get one, and I did. And I built it, and I'm happy with it. And today we're going to see my process. Uh, it is going to be stills because I wasn't recording video during this time. But I'm going to go through, give some commentary on how I built it, how I painted it, what I like, what I don't like. And at the end, we'll show you the finished kit. So without further ado, let's get started. What's that? An entire city in space. Okay, so getting started, here's a couple shots of all the parts in the kit. The kit has good detail on the exterior. There is very little, if any, uh, internal uh, detail. There is some details in the cargo bay, but as far as anything else, there's not a lot. The windshields aren't even clear parts. They're just kind of molded uh, into the face of the of the uh, front of the assembly. And... Um, you just have a decal to use for the windows, which is fine. Um, and I'm good with that. My first step in the kit was to assemble the booster rockets and tank assembly. They went together pretty well. Uh, no major gaps. There's some seams, but uh, some sanding and filling for a while uh, cleared all those up. The next part was to assemble the shuttlecraft itself. The shuttle itself went together pretty quickly. I think it only took me about an hour to get everything assembled. And then um, several hours of filling and sanding to take care of the seams. Which really there weren't many seams to deal with that were that bad. So all in all went together really well. My next step was to prime the entire kit. I just used a standard uh, decent automotive primer. I primed it in black. My thought was when I went to paint it, I could bring out some details and I'm glad I did because it, it did bring out some details and it came out nice. Also at this point, I made the call of deciding to seal the bay doors shut. Um, I couldn't get them to sit really well, uh, just in the closed position. And since I'm pretty much only going to display this with the bay doors closed. I just decided to close it. There's not a whole lot of detail on the inside anyways, and no one would ever see it. The next step, after doing a lot of masking, was to paint on in various shades uh, white. I did this with my airbrush to try to bring out as much detail as I could in the shadowing from the flat uh, primer. And the, the black primer actually came out really good, so I just left it. And uh, with the uh, airbrush, I was able to pull out some decent detail from the tail fin and the other heat tiles patterns on the uh, fuselage and everything. And uh, knowing that I'm going to go back and detail it more, I didn't do too much on this. You can see on the later pictures here that uh, some paint had seeped through the mask, which is fine. I just went back with a uh, fine paintbrush and some flat black paint and took care of that real quick. So here's where some of the fun began. I started detailing this using some washes and some uh, some uh, just pin painting uh, with a really fine brush here and there. Uh, I kind of just decided just to let myself go and whatever felt good and looked good, I was just going to do it. And I'm happy with how it came out. It looks really, it doesn't look really detailed, but there's not a lot of detail here to work with. The tail fin and some of the tiles uh, have most of the detail. The engines are pretty much black and I ended up, you know, dry brushing some detail on those and just picking out some highlights with a small brush and some silver paint. And all in all, came out really well. And after that, I clear coated everything in a gloss clear coat and started working on applying the, deca the decals. The decals on this kit were really, really nice. They went on well. They were durable. They weren't, uh, they didn't rip or tear anywhere. And a really cool part I liked was the gold stripes for the shuttle. 
they're actually somewhat transparent. So after I laid the decals down, I realized, oh wow, I'm not really gonna have to do much detailing after the fact because my detailing from the previous step was really showing through. So on to the next phase, which is the clear coat. And I did the final clear coat on the shuttle in a flat. Uh, I tried a semi-flat, I just didn't like it as well. So I just went with a plain matte finish and it came out really well. I'm really happy with the results. Okay, at this point, I turned my attention back to the rockets and the, or the rocket boosters and the fuel tank. And again, just kind of let myself go as I went. I, I knew that I didn't want it to look like a pristine um, uh, ship or anything. I wanted it to look used. Uh, in my mind, they've used these to make several trips into space and, you know, being bad guys, they got to use everything they have. Uh, so I figured it's been used quite a bit. So I just let, let my uh, creative uh, flow go and I really like how it came out. Went through with several washes and some pin detailing and picked out some highlights along the way. Once all of the detailing was done, it was just a matter of uh, flat coating everything. Uh, the, the fuel tanks and the booster rockets had to get flattened. Um, same mat I did the shuttlecraft with and then it just went together. Uh, the shuttle connects to the rocket boosters uh, with, little, uh, with a, a pin and a snap so you can actually remove it. Um, I didn't glue it in because I thought eh, I might want to hang it from the ceiling someday. All right, and here we have the completed kit of the Moonraker from James Bond's 007 Moonraker movie. The movie came out in 1979, and granted, it was probably one of the more cheesy James Bond movies, but in 79, you know, Star Wars had been out for a couple of years, and everyone was getting into the sci-fi movie thing and the special effects, and even though it, some of it really doesn't hold up well to today's standards, uh, I really enjoyed watching the movie when I was a kid. Uh, this was probably the second or third James Bond movie I'd ever seen, I had ever seen as a kid, and uh, I was a big James Bond fan. The first James Bond movie I saw was The Spy Who Loved Me. And as soon as I saw that uh, Lotus drive off the dock and turn into a submarine, I was hooked. I really enjoy the James Bond movies and the gadgets and the cars and the spaceships and the airplanes and all that cool stuff. I just, I just think it's really fun. And I've always wanted to build one of these Moonraker rockets or space shuttles. And I'm glad I did. The kit went together really well. The details hold up really well, and I mean, you don't have to do detailing like this. I mean, just straight out of the box, some basic paint and decals. The kit's going to look really nice. Um, I'm really happy with it, and I'm looking forward to doing some of the other James Bond 007 kits that uh, round uh, that uh, they're coming out with in the future. And, uh, yeah, so if you can find this kit and you have an interest in this kit, I think it's a fun kit to do. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, please comment in the sections below. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Also, subscribe. I'll be coming out with some more new content. Uh, my next video, hopefully, will be on the um, 2001 Space Odyssey Discovery uh, kit that I just recently got. And that should be a fun one as well. So please like, please subscribe, uh, ring the bell if you want to get uh, notified the next time I upload content. And thanks for watching and have a great day.